In the last video we wrote insert. In this video I want to do insert range. Insert range differs from insert in that insert range inserts more than one item at a time. In the previous video we inserted one person. I think I called him Billy or Bob or Joe or Huffy or I don't remember his name. But he was 25 years old. Let's say we have a whole range of people that come to our party. Let's look at the built-in implementation actually first. Let's go list, list. I'll say insert range. Control shift space. It takes an index at which to insert the item, and then an innumerable sequence of items to insert. And if you're familiar with much of .NET, you'll know that pretty much everything is innumerable that has anything to do with collections, arrays, lists, linked lists, dictionaries. Pretty much every collection implements innumerable. And then there's, there's all the fancy link stuff and link queries that all returns innumerable. So you give me a general innumerable. We've examined this interface in previous videos. I can iterate that and I can insert it into our list. The implementation is pretty straightforward. Let's actually use the built-in one, though. I'm going to go to a basic array. We'll do an int array. A whole range of people show up. We'll say they're 55, 65, 75. Get your age going on. That'll be awesome. We got all the grandmas and grandpas showing up. I probably just offended half of my audience there. 55 is not grandma and grandpa. Maybe 65 is. I don't know. 55, you're probably not there. Quite, ah, who knows? Anyway, at index 2, I want to insert 55, 65, 75. So that'll essentially take this, copy it, and here's index 0, index 1, index 2. So right there, I want to control V, paste, insert those items right there is essentially what we're doing. Control Z, 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 control F5, build this, run this. You can see with the built in implementation, we have 32, 83, the original numbers in our sequence, but then we have 55, 65, 75, the new items, and then we continue on with 99, 42, 31, 99. 42, 31. So these three senior level people just butted their way into our list. Let's go write our own implementation. I'm going to take this back to a me list. Me list. Obviously, we get the red squigglies here saying, hey, you don't have an insert range. Let's add one public void insert range int index i enumerable of t items. Now we have an interesting situation here because our capacity is 5, don't blink, our capacity is 5, our count is also 5, our underlying array is not big enough to handle three more party goers, and we've seen the ensure capacity method that we wrote in the last video, if I say ensure capacity, that's great and dandy, that'll double the length of my array, but what if I'm adding more than just double the number of people that are coming, maybe we have lots of people come to our party late and I don't know, we'll just do 75, 75, 75, 75, 75. Well, that is more than double what we'll need. If I take all these items and I add them to these items, well, if I double the amount of items that's in my sequence, I'll go from five elements to ten elements, but I have more need than just ten elements here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's more than ten. So our insured capacity, just by saying, hey, double the length here, uh, that's not going to fly. So what we want to do instead is add an argument here saying int needed capacity, saying, hey, I actually need this amount of room then that's going to make our calls to ensure capacity fail so i'm actually going to add an overload here i'll, I'll say void ensure capacity and this overload will take no arguments and i'll simply call ensure capacity with count plus one i just need enough room for one more item we'll assume that's all we need now you may think hey why don't we just make that a default argument like this we could say go like that gets count plus one, but that doesn't fly because of the way that default arguments are implemented. It must be a constant compile time value like eight. It can't be a runtime value here or an expression like count plus one because of the way that the default arguments are implemented using attributes. Go watch my videos on default arguments if you're interested. So I have to go to this old school way of doing an overload where I just say ensure capacity and then say ensure capacity pass the default value here for count plus one. Now, how's this going to change down here? Well, I'll simply say, hey, if our needed capacity is greater than the number of items we can actually store, or I should say our capacity, because that is items.length, if I 
remember right let's look at capacity it is items dot length very good so we'll just use our capacity if our needed capacity is greater than our capacity then we need to resize our array and we could assume items dot length times two which is actually the default implementation yes if if we need to add one item and we don't have enough room for that one item then double the size of the array because chances are we're going to add more items later let's just double the size of the array while we're at it but we have a problem here if our needed capacity is actually greater greater than this value we need that size instead of this size so I'm gonna uh, uh, what are we gonna do I'll, I'll just I don't know shoot off my hip here this is, this is uh, like when I'm playing first-person shooters and I don't zoom in with my scope I just hey let's shoot off the hip uh, int target size gets items dot length times two if target size is actually less than our needed capacity then our target size will get our needed capacity so I'm going to assume let's double the length of our array if we have to do a resize let's at least double it so we have more room for some extra ads and again in previous videos I talked at length about making sure you can manage your capacity don't waste too much room don't be like government institutions and, and waste be wasteful Hopefully out out here in Maine you're managing that and you understand what's going on and you're sending hints to your list of what you need. But here and here we're going to say, hey, let's let's go for doubling the length of the list. But if that's not good enough, then we'll just go all the way to whatever they need. And then down here I'll say, target size. I hope that's I hope that's I hope that'll work. Okay, we need to go down here to insert range. Let's actually implement our insert range. We'll call ensure capacity, but we need to pass an argument here. And the argument we need to pass is the number of items that we need plus the count of items we already have. It's our count, it's the number of items inside of me list, this instance of me list, plus items dot count. Count here, this count that I just called, this is an extension method inside of enumerable. It's real simple. All it does is enumerate over this enumerable and count how many items are in there. It's actually a little bit sloppy, but we'll clean that up in the next video. Ensure capacity that, that we have enough room for everybody. We need to do the shuffle, just like we did with insert. We need to shuffle everyone down. For example, let's go down here to our list, and I'll get rid of some of these 75s. In this case, we have 55, 65, and 75. We're trying to insert them at index 2. So this is index 0, index 1, index 2, 3, Four. I want 55, 65, and 75 to go right here. 55, 65, 75. That means all these guys need to shuffle down. We have our ensure capacity method written, so hopefully that ensures that we have enough size for them. In that case, that would actually double the capacity of our array, so I'll throw these extra two out here. And then 31 needs to shuffle all the way over here, so 31. And 42 needs to shuffle there, 42, and 99 needs to shuffle there, and then right here we can bring the 55 in, 65 in, 75 like so. That's a lot like our insert that we did in the previous video. I'll just say array.copy, and I'm looking at this code up here, I'm just going to duplicate a lot of this code. Items, go down to the overload, the source index is index, the destination array is also items. The destination index is index plus items.count again. And the number of items I want to copy is again count minus index. Okay, this is the shuffle right here. The shuffle. The only difference between this copy and this copy here is we're saying index plus items.count. Right here we're only inserting one item. Down here we're inserting several items. I need to know the number of items. Why am I getting the red squigglies? Let me look at this. Because, of course, this is called items, and our underlying list is called items. Ah, uh, uh, I could I could disambiguate this by saying this dot on there, but I still don't like how that doesn't read very well. So, insert range, um, new items. How about that? I'll say we want to insert these new items, and now items resolves to this underlying items. Generally, I don't like renaming an argument just to fix a problem in there, but I think new items is... A descriptive name both to us inside of here and to the caller outside of here so I think we're good alright we just did the shuffle and now after doing the shuffle we have to do the actual insertion we have to take the items inside of new items and copy them to our underlying 
array. So I'll say for each, we'll just make this simple, for each t item in new items. In fact, I'll even say t new item inside of new items. Items sub index plus plus gets new item. New item. So we do the shuffle. We do the copy. Notice I'm modifying an argument value here, but I don't feel too bad about that because it's like almost a local value. Once it's copied in, then I'm good to go. So I usually don't modify argument values here, but yeah, oh well. And let's just uh, let's run this. Control five. Hopefully, we... ah, oh, so nasty. Oh, problems. It's you know that ambiguity error really bit me in the in the high high hiney. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it clean here. Um, new items. Should be new items here. New items there. So this is, we want the underlying array there. We want the underlying array there, but we want the actual new items count there. Control F5. Build that, run that. And of course, I forgot to also add to count the number of new items that we have. So count plus equals new items dot count. Control F5. Ah. <sighs> Is that right? Is that right? Let's look at these values here. We got 32, 83. All right, 32, 83. That's right. And then at index 2, we did 55, 65, 75. 55, 65, 75. And then we have 99, 42, 31, 99, 42, 31. I better stop while I'm ahead. I can't believe I got those errors. You think I was not a professional computer scientist. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. I've only been doing this 13 years. I'm still kind of young. In the field, but anyway, uh, this insert range we've written stinks. Okay, this is really expensive, and I'm going to show you in the next video why. But before you get to the next video, I want you to look at this insert range and think, what is expensive about this? There's some expense here. There's some overhead. There's some unnecessary overhead. How could we optimize this a little bit? Generally, I'm not big on premature optimization. However, if I was working for Microsoft and I was writing a list and I knew that people all over the world would use this list day in and day out constantly, I would want this thing to be fast, as fast as possible. And the way we have written it, or I have written it in this video, is not as fast as this list could be. Can you find the issues and then fix those issues and then look at how I fix them in the next video?